Hello there, just uh, wanted to show you something I've been working on. Uh, this is a universal um, factory, supposed to be. The idea is not to use um, logistic robots, but to have um, essentially one factory that can produce whatever you want of it. So here, for example, we uh, want to create uh, red science packs, so we choose it in the assembly machine. And then we, we can't connect the assembly, assembly machine to the circuit network, so we have a constant combinator here that holds our red, red science pack. The five has to do with timing. Um, a single cycle of the factory is uh, 25 uh, game ticks and this takes five game ticks so that gives us five signs that can be produced um, so that's that here we have the different production line each production line has um, the materials gathered here and the uh, re result produced here um, Um, the idea here is that, okay, so this, the red uh, signal, if you look to the side, the red signal here is the production line number. So this is production line number one. This is production line number two. Um, the idea is that we have a clock here that uh, this just runs through uh, 1 through uh, 50, this divides by 10, so we get a cycle 0 through, th through 49, this divides by 10, so we get a cycle 0 through 4, um, that repeats over here, and this is our production line selector, we only have two production lines, but it cycles through 4, it doesn't matter. Um, so when the uh, clock turns to the first production line, this um, machine will broadcast the things it's going to make. Uh, as you can see, if you look to the side here, it just cycles through. So this, the first production line broadcasts whatever it's making, the second broadcasts whatever it's making, and so on. Um, this is the decoder, so the, ho the whole idea of cycling through is not to have more than one decoder. So to, to be able to use the same uh, decoder for all the production lines, just cycle through them. Uh, so the decoder obviously just takes uh, what we want to produce and as input and outputs the materials we need to produce it, so uh, gears need to iron plates, uh, science packs needs one copper plate and one gear. So that's that. Obviously this is going to be way way longer for all the recipes. This is just an example. Uh, over here, uh, because we're cycling through, we need uh, something to keep um, the request of the line constant, not cycling through. To, so this is a basic memory cell. It's a bit big because I had problem with problems with synchronization and racing conditions and whatever. Um, but essentially, this just takes the cycling input and picks up the correct uh, production line and outputs it as constant. As you can see, uh, this is 10, minus 10, minus 10, which is what we need for uh, this line. If I change this here, so I remove that, and I should remove that as well, um, then it updates over here and still keep, keeps it constant. Uh, the next thing would be our uh, clock. So uh, this is a basic clock. I do want to at some point switch it to this type of clock, but this was easier to get the timing right with. So this just counts in 100 um, the copper wires or whatever it could be, whatever. Um, and 
when it gets to a hundred um, one of these just switches uh, the clock to a tock and when that happens which is going to happen in a second this inserter just empties the case out five times faster because of stack size the stack size research or whatever it is uh, and this just cycles through so our clock is um, five parts tick and one part talk which makes um, this run correctly so again this um, inserter is connected through this to the clock only works on a tick and also only works so long as um, the network still needs uh, iron at this in this case so this this produces this outputs minus the amount of iron we need and this uh, summed up with whatever whatever is in this chest should be zero so long as it's less than zero this inserter will keep running and once we transfer to a talk these inserters again five times faster will empty out this case and we'll start all over again so this this um, should supply all the correct um, materials. Something seems wrong here. Not sure what. Why are there things here? It's very strange. Something just went wrong. Ignore it. Oh, yes. I can see what happened here. Uh, I think something over here ran out. Anyway, this is our storage area, supposed to be, but I'm cheating and I'm using um, uh, logistic robots because I just haven't implemented this yet. Uh, so there, but this is our storage area. Let me just uh, fill out a bit of um, iron plates because we ran out. Um, storage area is supplied by this nice train, which um, you probably guessed goes to the um, end of the production cycle. So it's just it just cycles through. So in any case, obviously there are many things here that are inefficient and not very well implemented. Uh, this is only the start. Uh, if you have any comments, I would be very, very glad to hear if you have any ideas for improvements. I have several, several problems. For example, this I had to loop back because the assembling machines wouldn't pick up the materials fast enough but I do want to have sort of an overflow system so the materials that aren't used are just dumped back into the system but I still need to figure that out this is just a proof of concept obviously only have three materials the decoder only decodes two recipes uh, we only have two production lines but the idea is that this thing can be almost infinitely scalable well not infinitely but you know what i mean um anyway let me know what you think uh the save file also if i didn't mention should be in the comments or in the description or in the form or somewhere just ask for it it's fine cheers <laughs>